talking about this. We've got to put it together so that it's easier to comprehend. Um, so from an internal perspective, I feel really good infrastructure where we are. Success with Honor has been really, really um, strong and the fundraising efforts um, there is where those are starting to pick up. We now can obviously help promote that from the NCA. Um, Tony Misitano uh, had a, a million dollar gift there and we sent that note out the other day. So I feel like we're really in a good spot. I'm not as, I don't lose as much sleep over that anymore. Do we have to get better? Yes. Um, this is here to stay. This is part of the world we're living in. I think whatever, it's really hard for those of us, and I said this when we, we started, to really walk through this NIL space. It, it's, it's counter to everything we all grew up with in the industry. And so we're starting to, when you speak about it and you try to educate not only your, your students, but your, your fans and your base, it's okay to do these things. Now, here's what I would tell you. My my objective is to make sure I protect the 800 plus student athletes. Tax implications. What does it mean when you put your name on stuff? That's where now we're getting to the point. I'm going to give you every opportunity to be successful in NIL. You can run with it. Some don't. Some don't want to run with it. But I'm going to give you every opportunity. But let's make sure we're we're we're, we're make, doing the right things and understanding your brand. You know, we got the brand academy that's that's started. So there's just so much there. Long-winded answer. I feel like you could tell it's kind of convoluted, but as an as a department, we're in a better spot um, now. It gets to the I think we're in the education and information stage of it all. Pat, to follow up on Mark's question with the NIL, uh, you said there's been improvements since you arrived. Have you seen tangible results when it comes to attracting student athletes here, whether it be football or any other sport? Uh I, I don't know if I could answer that really. I'm being very honest with you because I, we're not what, what you're hearing on the in the recruiting space is, and it happened with us just this week. People just won't come. They're they're throwing a half a million dollars or seven hundred thousand dollars if you come to X school. We're not going to do that. That's just not how it works. Um, what you will see is a lot of our athletes have had a lot of success in in that space. Um, so I, I don't know. I think it's too early to tell. This is my first recruiting cycle. Um, but it is absolutely a part of the recruiting process. I think this is what gives us an advantage. We're Penn State. We're so we're so big and powerful, and our alums are so engaged. It's harnessing that to help us on the recruiting front. So I, I just don't know yet what what will come of that. I think after this, we're, I'm actually curious. Post signing day, and then getting in the spring, let, let's see where the dust settles and, and what's the impact. Pat, um, you've. Beaver Stadium, it's been the data collection phase for a long time here. Um, have you guys made a decision about what you want to do in terms of renovation? And if not, what's kind of the timeline for that? So we're close. Uh, no, um, and, and I think we're I think we're at the point. We we had a study that was done. We we've we've there's a lot of studies going on. I mean, there were 19 studies done on the stadium. Uh, nothing was done. So there in the in in the past eight, nine years, there were 19 studies done on Beaver Stadium. Uh, so we it's not for a lack of information. So now I, I will tell you this, we I feel very comfortable in the next, you know, you got the holidays and you got January, February, but that we will have a recommendation to Neely and the board as to what direction we need to, to, to move in. So I do think it's coming now what, what the board decides and how they want to move um, because it is a huge project. Uh, if you're, you know, the renovation, I, I, look at, I, I'll, I make no bones about it. I, I, I love this building. I love coming in this this building, Beaver Stadium. I love the history of this building. Um, when I walk the parking lots and I talk to people about having generations of of memories in this building, so I am, um, you know, I want to make this building better, and when we have to do that, so we're we're very close. I mean, all the data is there now. You know, figuring out the financial models, how would it work? What's the recommendation? And and so we're close. To follow up on that component of it, the question has always kind of been, well, if you spend X amount on this versus a new stadium, I mean, what what is the threshold? What's the point of no return where if you have to spend 600, 700, 800 million to renovate Beaver versus another, how, how does that all weigh into the equation? To build a new stadium, the, there's a threshold. Let me just put it that way. To build new anywhere, um, it's expensive. Let me just put it that way. I, I I don't know. I mean, I I have we have some numbers, um, but if you're you're building new, 
And look, at I'm going to tell you, uh, we, we are very proud of having 107,000 and over 100,000 fans. No one's building a 100,000-seat stadium. That's just, that's important to us. I think that's an important piece to who we are. So, yeah, there is a, there is a financial threshold that building new just would be, you know, it could be infeasible from the, uh, you know, not feasible with the, the, the financial piece. You said, uh, going back to the NIL, you said earlier that, that there are schools that are going to say to a kid half a million dollars to come to our school and you're not going to do that. Do you have enough, uh, I guess, oversight of the collectives that you can guarantee that that won't happen? Yeah, because at, in, your, in recruiting, it's still the coaches involved in the recruiting process. And so while I really feel very comfortable, especially with the, uh, um, the success with Honor Crew, is that's not what they're there for. They, they know that. They're not doing it. And they're doing it, you know, what, what I believe on – what we would always say the Penn State way. We're going to do it on the up and up. We're going to make sure this is the way it should be. But at the end of the day, it's really the coaches that have to make that plea. We're, we're just not going to come and try to pay you to come here. Um, now, I'm going to say this too you will have the opportunity to maximize your value when you come to Penn State, irregardless of your sport. Because we've got gymnasts that have a social media presence that are doing extremely well. A lot of it is driven through the social media. Um, you've got, uh, it isn't just your starting quarterback. It's not just Cliff. Cliff's very engaged. It's all your athletes. And so if we can tap and harness, and I can give you all the opportunities to be successful, and then you tap into our alum, alumni base, and we have the second most CEOs in the country, and their businesses start to utilize our athletes to tell their story. That's where you can be really successful, and so that's really why we're trying to harness, uh, really trying to harness the energy. A lot, a lot is made about the collectives, and they're very helpful, but that's a, that's a portion of the NIL space. Corporate is big, um, you know, utilizing internships and jobs and education, and so we're just scratching the surface. I think you got to find a sustainable model. What we have right now is not a sustainable model, and and I don't believe that the that the the way that it is now currently situated across the country is sustainable. Like, and and there's a lot of misinformation on what people are being offered, um, and I think you're going to find as time goes on. Wait, they told me I was going to get X, and now I'm not. And so I think that's this new NIL world that we're living in. We're still trying to find our way through it, but but yeah, I feel really comfortable about where success with honor is as a collective and, and what's happening. Hey, Pat, how's it going? I'm over. Oh, there you go. Sorry. Um, for the longest time, I wanted to do a story about how many season ticket holders there were. And for the longest time, people said that it's not really a piece of information that we want to share. Um, I think people in this room have been curious about, you know, how many studies have been done. That's not always necessarily a piece of information that Penn State historically has wanted to share. You've shared both of those things sort of off the cuff. Be, both between now and a few months ago, um, what is sort of your balance between Penn State has always handled information this way versus what harm does it do to tell anybody here are some interesting things that contextualize the decisions that we're making? I'm just going to be really honest with y'all. That's really, I don't know any other way to do it. I'm not doing it. First off, saying that we have 92,000 football season ticket holders, I don't know anywhere in the world that that's a bad thing. Uh, I think it shows incredible support from our base. Um, okay, uh, 19 studies, it's fact. There are 19 studies done on Beaver Stadium. Uh, there will be always stuff that we won't be able to, to um, discuss be, for a, a myriad of reasons. It's, it's who I am. I'm going to be really honest with you. Um, I, I don't see it any other way. Uh, I can't speak to what happened in the past. Can't think, I can't speak to other philosophies of the past, but right? I, I don't. I don't know. Ninety-two thousand season ticket holders is pretty darn impressive, if you ask me. Um, and I think it shows. I think it's bigger than just that. I think it shows how passionate this base is about Penn State football. I mean, that number alone shows it. So um, I don't know. I don't know if I answered your question, but you know, I think it's just it's fact. Hey, Pat. Um, James is often referenced in kind of trying to climb that ladder in college football, the need to retain your top assistant coaches and coordinators, not have them make a lateral move. Um, we haven't seen much of that in recent years, but I know 
there's going to be targets on the staff. This is the time of year that names pop up. How do you feel like you, the university, and this program are positioned to make sure that James kind of has that stockpile of minds he wants on the staff? Well, I, I, I think you're right. I, I think you got it. Continuity is huge, right? You want to keep that continuity. There's going to come a time where people just it's, it's probably better for them to move on to have an up. Everyone aspires to be, whether it's a head coach, whether it be a DC and OC or whatever that is, we are, I will always be committed to keeping our staff together, no matter what there just does like the stadium. There's becomes a threshold where you're like, uh, do we, do we need to invest at that point? Or do we feel we've got to move in a different direction, but that will always be in concert with James. I've told James, I said, James, what, what do we need to be successful? What do we have to do to win a national championship? And so I think keeping staff is critical. I think that's important for not just James, but all, all of our teams. And I think that's really something that, you know, you got If you have a great staff and you got great people, you want to keep them as long as you can. Because every time you turn that over, especially in the coaching ranks, it's just different philosophies. It just becomes a bigger, it just takes longer to, to, to get the process going. There are a lot of collectives and NIL for a traditional fan base is maybe a little hard to explain beyond we will give you money and then good things will proceed to happen right. non-specifically. How has the translation been for you talking to people that, that you're targeting and saying, look, you can help us with this process and this is what's going to happen? Because I think sometimes people can look and say, look, here are a bunch of things that are going to help student athletes, but even I if I gave you $20, I'm not sure what any of these groups would do with it. I mean, where do you think the translation part is for people it, right it's now? It's the biggest challenge, right? And, and honestly, that's not the conversation I'm having with them. I will put you in touch with Success With Honor or the collectives and then have that conversation. My job is I'm going to talk to you. So everyone always thought it, it would cannibalize development. It, it's not. There's enough people that have interest in brick and mortar and scholarships. And now this becomes a part of it. I'm not here to raise money for success with honor. I'm here to say, hey, if you want to do that, that's great. Here's the collective. You talk to them. Awesome. Um, but I am not also shy to say that that's important and the collectives are important. Now, the, the infrastructure on the back end, there's contracts that they have. And, and it's probably a good conversation that you should have with the collectives on how they do the back end business piece. My sole focus is to support whatever is in the best interest of our athletes, protect our athletes. Um, so yeah, it is, it's a very, it's a, you know, it's, it's a confusing topic. Um, I know a lot of attention once again, goes to the collectives, but it's, there's other ways the NIL space is, is impactful too. And I think that's what we're really focused on for us. Yep. You saw, I send emails out. I support success with honor because it supports all 31 teams. I think there's great programs that they're doing. I think one of the things that has come, across to me is a lot of our athletes are doing work through that and meeting different audiences that are like, wow, PJ Mustafer is an amazing person. Um, that is what's kind of neat with this process, which is kind of, I don't think anyone really talks about that. Hey, Pat, uh, going off what Tyler said, uh, you know, you talk about retention of coaches and everything like that. Do you feel like the athletic department's in a position where if someone like Micah Shrewsbury, for instance, with men's basketball and the program that hasn't necessarily always gotten its funding. Do you think it's in a position to retain someone like that long-term if bigger schools do come call? Yes. Absolutely. Even the man. biggest schools. Yep. Absolutely. I'm committed to keeping our, our, and Mike is a great coach. Mike is a really, really, really good coach. Now here's what I will tell you. And I said this before when I got up here, it's not just about paying the coach and the great coaches know that it's about keeping the staff, being able to hire staff that if you lose staff, which is part of the process. It's also about putting the infrastructure behind them to be successful. Where can I recruit? How do I recruit? How do I feed my athletes? How do I keep my athletes healthy? Though that infrastructure, which I think is lacked for a lot of our sports, is where I think we, are, we have to invest in now. And, and we started already doing that. So paying the coach is great, but the great coaches understand it's all the other stuff that helps you eventually win a national championship. Pat, in terms of facilities, right in front of you, in terms of facilities, uh, you're going to have two wrestling matches at uh, Bryce Jordan Center in the new year. How important is that for not just exposure, but also using Bryce Jordan Center in different ways? And then what do you see as the future of Rec Hall, both for wrestling and the other sports that uh, compete there? Yeah, you know, I, I'm glad. It's amazing. I think we sold one of them out in like two minutes. Um, 
I, I, I'm excited to see it. I've been the two at Rec Hall for wrestling, um, and I think there is a balance of that that the BJC environment, for which I haven't seen yet, for wrestling, and then that intimate excitement of wrestling in Rec Hall. Uh, I do think there is, uh, you know, uh, an opportunity to to. Uh, we're really looking at BJC and how we can use it more. It's not. I, I we're a tenant at, at the BJC, so everyone knows that. So it's not like I can just go in there and roll down mats and, and participate. Um, but I, I, I think from a, uh, it's an interesting question about rec. I, I think there's really, there's an opportunity there. When I look at rec hall and it's a little bit like East uh, we're, we're, we are focused right now. And, and uh, let's use Cal, for example, we, we have a nice wrestling facility, but we've got to find enhancements there. We're looking and exploring how we can continue to enhance that. The training room there is absolutely inadequate. Um, we are working on, on studies to, to focus on enhancing the training. Room. You've got the two volleyballs there. You've got wrestling right now. We've got men's and women's soccer. We're actively working on building the men's. We're finishing the, the fundraising for men's and women's soccer. But when we look at, when I go back to some of these questions about the coaches, if you don't have the, the sports med piece, sports performance piece, then that's, that's not, you're, you're not going to reach your full potential. So when I look at rec right now, those are the enhancements that I'm working trying to figure out and trying to do in very short order. I would say the same at East where we have our lacrosse and field hockey and tennis. Um, what are we doing there? We have nutrition stations going in in each of those. Um, we are looking at the, like for, for example, in East, this isn't what you asked about, but this is the, the roof leaks. So every, all the way, like it rusts. It's like, what are we doing? So, you know, we got to fix the infrastructure and we're looking at moving the locker rooms, giving them the rosters are getting bigger for all teams. So those are the things when you look at our facilities, okay, well, how does it impact the student athletes experience? You know, volleyball, great atmosphere, great game day, I, you know, down the road, I love to explore what we could do with rec. Yes. Right now I got to focus on the student athlete and that piece of it is, is really, really more important. Pat, when, when it comes to NIL, and you, you've talked about how much things have changed just in you know, the, the year plus that it's been here, how do you kind of balance in the conversations, you know, needing to get up to speed and catching up with knowing that things could change? How do you get people, I guess, to kind of take the long view um, in terms of, you know, what's working now might not necessarily be the model down the line? Yeah, it's hard. It, I'll just be honest with you. I think it's really difficult because, I mean, the, the NCAA a few weeks ago came out with their 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 rules are regulated. I couldn't understand them myself. That's what I do for a living. So I think, you know, it takes time to really mine through that. So when you have these conversations, I think you, the, the, on a one-on-one -on -one personal kind of interaction, it's really hard to, to, to kind of explain it. The corporate business piece is not because it's a, it's a marketing objective that you, you utilize, which is normal, right? Endorsements. So that I think is an easier conversation to have with folks that have businesses that can utilize athletes to promote their business. I'm not sitting here to tell you it's an easy conversation. Like, well, here's how it works. I mean, we just talked about it. Explain success. Well, have success went on or give you their whole, you know, how they do it. They have contracts. They're very buttoned up. Um, so it, it is a, it is a, a very difficult kind of conversation um, to have in the sense that they're, they're always moving the target on us. Um, but we have the ability to continue to, to, to do this at a high level. And we, we've had the most success with, with mostly business owners who understand it from that perspective. Pat, we've seen Utah sell out its allotment of Rose Bowl tickets. What is your ticket sales for the Rose Bowl? What kind of response have you seen from your fan base? I don't know if we're, I mean, we're sold out. I mean, we have no tickets left. I think we, as someone had told me the other day, it was like three minutes. We had sold out our center. I, I don't, I, well, you can call me on that, but I don't know the exact number. It was quick. So we've, there's been a lot of excitement I, when it, when uh, there was word that we, there was a potential to go there. Um, look at, I'm a big 10 kid. Um, I get goosebumps thinking about it now. Uh, I've heard nothing but amazing stories when uh, James and the team went last time. So we've had a great, great, great response. We had the Rose Bowl in town. Um, their representatives last week, they're fired up. Um, I've, I'm, I'm fully expecting uh, Penn State Nation to take over Pasadena and L.A. And we're, we're fired up. We're fired up for that. Let me go back to the, the football assistant coach salary pool for a second. Um, it, we've never, we don't see assistant coach contracts here, which always leads to a lot of gray area questions from fans. 
where does football salary pool rank in the Big Ten? Do you know? I mean, I think we had told we were told a couple of years ago it was top three. It is. Okay. It is. And it's a moving target, right? Um, but it is. It's top three. Okay. Yeah. And you mentioned taking care of your student athletes for NIL, but the PIAA earlier this month passing NIL for high school athletes. How did you react to that news? And now that NIL is expanding into high school, what are your thoughts on that? I really didn't even know it happened. Um, I'm so focused on what we're doing here. I, look at it. I, I'll say the same thing I said for um, when this all kind of bubbled up with our, I think it's great. If an athlete can make money with their, their uh, NIL and do it. Awesome. I, I just always go back to make sure that we're, we're doing it the right way. There's a lot of, a lot of sharks out there. And if we're having troubles now keeping people away, what's a 14-year-old or a 15-year-old or a 16-year-old dealing with? Um, and so um, I think it's great. If that's, that's what happens, that's, that's awesome. I, I, candidly, I, I, I haven't – and that's not no disrespect. I just haven't even – I'm so focused on what we're doing here. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out ours. Um, but I would say the same thing. If you can do it, amazing, right? That, good, good for them. I, I would just – I'd caution on just how we protect all of the high school student athletes through this process. Uh, Pat, I'm, I'm sure you had an impression, a strong one of James when he took this job and got to know him over the summer, but we saw you traveling to, to road games and really a part of the process. What stood out to you learning about James spending time with him in season and watching through the wins, through the losses, uh, how he dealt with that? Yeah, you know, it's uh, that's a really good question, I, and I'm glad you asked because being embedded with them, you know, I've known James for a while. I, my first takeaway is, man, he loves, he loves his players, um, and there is a great love between both of them, which for me is really, really cool. Like, I love my student athletes. I, I, I like, and I haven't had a chance to get to, but I, I think so. I, I really appreciate that perspective, and everything he does is about helping their cause and what helps them reach their full potential. Um, I, I think our staff is really talented. I think we have incredible um, young men that play this game for Penn State. You, If you have a chance to, and you all do, but I don't think our base gets to really interact with them top to bottom. That that locker room is is really special. And so it's really been fun to, for me to watch that. Um, you know, James, he's an elite recruiter. I think he is, um, he's a good man. He's a, I'll, I'll just tell you the story. So we have these meetings, we get together. Obviously, you know, I'm passionate about all our sports, but he gets a call and, and he probably won't like me saying this, but whatever. Um, he gets up, he's like, hey, you know, and it, it's, it's his daughter. He's like, I got to go. I got to go. I got to take care of something. And I text him that night. I said, you know what? I just appreciate you doing that because my father, I think I said, is no longer with us, but we would call my dad like at any moment's notice throughout the day and he'd be in a meeting and he'd pick up and he would make, make it the most important thing to take care of us. He didn't hesitate one second. That's James Franklin. That's what I love about the guy. And I think his passion, I want to keep him loose. I want to keep him um, I want to make sure that he has every resource available to go win a national championship. And so being with this group, why I'm so happy that they're going to play in the Rose Bowl, why I know we're going to be elite and we're going to win a national championship, we're going to be great, is because I think he does, I believe he does everything the right way with those young men. And that's really what it's about. They'll sniff out fake stuff. They will. Um, but he, he, re he recruits great, great kids. He's a great person. His family's great and the staff. You know, and we could talk X's and O's and all that, but to me, it's like that's the stuff that really matters. If you're doing it that way, and you care about the, the student athletes, I, I, I will just say this: uh, we're blessed here because our our coaches are really like that. That they they put the student athletes first in everything, and I think that's that's how you can you can win championships that way. Pat, another facilities related question with field hockey as well as Jeffrey Field for soccer. What's the latest on each of those? Any updates on timelines? Uh, field hockey, field hockey is off and running. It's I felt, <laughs> I mean, it's a great thing we're building that facility. Shar has this wonderful year, goes to the Final Four, and everyone's sitting in the bleacher, they're standing up behind the fence. Uh, but that's that that's tracking really well. Um, we're we're halfway to our fundraising goal on uh, men's and women's soccer. Jeff. Um, 
we're getting that thing done. That is the number one priority. Uh, so I feel really good about that. We're having conversations there. Uh, so I, I, I feel we got to get that done. Um, what Eric uh, and Jeff, what they do, both programs, they deserve to have the best, as do all of our facilities. And we're working on some other facility projects as well. Pat, you mentioned giving James every all of the uh, resources he needs to win a national title. Uh, what what are some of the areas that you think you st that still need to be addressed from that perspective? You just build a big uh, weight room, a bunch of things have been done. What still needs to be done to get there? I think uh, we got to continue. Uh, this sounds probably silly to you, but I think food and nutrition is a real big area. Uh, that's for all of our athletes. We're, I think we're behind on that. Um, you know, there's uh, the, the sports performance. Honestly, it's not much, dis it's not too dissimilar from James as it is for all 31. All the focus is on mental health, sports performance, food, nutrition. Those are the areas that we're looking at. We're looking at um, a, a centralized training table for all athletes, which, which would be good. I know James has talked about that. Um, and so those are the areas, but things come up that we have to, we, we can't, we can't just be like, ah, no, no. If you're committed to, to going and doing it right. And, and I know we're talking about football, but it's everything we, you, you got to go, you, you got to be able to go put your money where your mouth is. If you're committed to go win a national championship and I am in everything, then we got to be able to do it. And we got to find the resources. And one of the biggest things we've had to do in the last five to six months is completely re rebuild our budget to make sure we're focusing on those, being able to, to be nimble and focus on the initiatives that help our student athletes reach their full potential on the field. And so it's not too dissimilar for, for, for James. I think that's where, um, it, you know, it's not just one-offs, right? It's not, it's like strategically, what do we need to do to get everybody to where they can maximize their potential? Yeah, Pat, uh, wrapping up with Beaver Stadium, going back to it. Um, is there an added sense of urgency now with the, you know, moving up of the expansion of the CFP and the, you know, growing possibility of on-campus stadium sooner than perhaps expected? Um, I think it, yeah, I, yes, but I think we would have, a, I would have that sense of urgency ir irregardless of the playoff. I do think, yeah, it will. I mean, make no bones about it. If we were to play a playoff game in three weeks, we'd play a playoff game in here. I don't care what it would take. We'd go flush the toilets and keep the water running for a month before we're going to play a football game in here. Um, but I do think there is a piece to that, that now that's a re that's a reality that is, is coming upon and it's coming fast. Uh, so we, I also think if you, um, the, those, uh, the, the work that would be done on, uh, Beaver allows us to, to use it. We can use it more throughout the year as well. Um, so I, I think it's not just solely football, but we've got to also find ways to help enhance the building and keep the life of the building. I mean, uh, our team is really working on how we can maximize Beaver Stadium more than seven days. Um, and so all of those things would play into the uh, uh, any sort of renovation. Thank you very much, Pat. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you all, by the way. And I, hey, I will say this just on a note. Um, you guys are unbelievable. I get off the bus and I see the fans, our Penn State fans. Um, they're an amazing bunch, but I, I get you guys travel so much. Um, it blows me away. I tell KP. So I appreciate all you all do. Have a wonderful holiday. And uh, we are. Thank you. James will be here.